Alright everyone, welcome back to Random Fixes. So today we're going to talk about blind spots. And no, it's not a biology class to teach you how your eye works, but it's about the areas that cannot be easily seen when you're driving. So for a normal passenger car, there exists a fair amount of areas that cannot be easily seen from the driver's position, and those areas are blind spots for the vehicle. The most dangerous blind spots are the two side ones that cannot be easily seen from the side mirrors. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, there are about 840,000 accidents per year that are related to those blind spots. Although there are blind spot mirrors available on the market, the blind spot warning effect is not as strong as the blind spot detection system, which is available on some of the newer models of the cars. But as an engineering student, I decided to make my own blind spot monitoring system on a budget with Arduinos and some radar modules. So let's get started. So for this project, we'll be using the GSN waterproof radar as the main sensor to measure the distance between two vehicles. Now because most of the Arduino chips, like the Nano or even the Mega, does not allow multi-threaded workload, we need at least two microcontrollers to reliably accomplish the task of measuring distance while notifying the driver if there is a vehicle present in the blind spots. So one of them will be used to connect to the sensor and process the signal to reduce the noise, and the other one will be used to acquire the filtered sensor data from the previous controller and notify the driver about the distance information. I also include a screw shield for the Mega so that I can get a reliable wire connection and will also use a speaker or buzzer to warn the driver of the presence of a vehicle in the blind spot when the driver is signaling for a lane change. And we'll also need an amplifier module to boost the signal amplitude passing to the speaker and an MPN transistor to pass the blinker signal into the Arduino a 330 ohm resistor for the LED, a 4.7k pull-up resistor, and roughly an 80k resistor for the transistor. And if you want to get fancy and want to play something else other than a buzzing sound generated by the Arduino, you can also include a SD card module to play some sound of a SD card, so it will be look like this. So for mounting the radar, I designed a little block to house the sensor so that this housing can be fixed onto the bumper with some double-sided tapes. So this would avoid drilling holes onto the bumper. And I also cut two boxes to house the Arduino and other chips. So the leads from those chips can be insulated from the metal of the car. So on the electronic side, this Arduino Nano is used to handle the communication with the radar module and some signal processing. Now because the data transferred back from the GSM module usually are corrupted with noises, which means that the reading is jumpy and inconsistent. I used a digital low pass filter and a median filter to get a relatively reliable reading. And since the reader module uses only digital pins to pass the distance data to the microprocessor, so it is trivial to add another sensor to the other side of the car, it is pretty much the same wiring and the same code for the other side. After the data has been processed by the Arduino Nano, it will pass the distance data to the Arduino Mega using the I2C bus. So in my setup, the Mega is functioning as the master and the Nano is functioning as the slave. Now because the Nano is filtering noises all the time, the master Mega will always have a relatively accurate reading upon request. I also made this little circuit to read the turn signal status, so whenever the turn signal is on, it will trigger an interrupt on the Arduino Mega to let it know that the driver may make a lane change soon, and based on this signal, the Mega will sound the alarm when the system detects an obstacle in the blind spot. Now I'm gonna cover the detailed theories and mechanics in another video. It will make this video like a college lecture if I were gonna cover everything, so if you're interested in the details of my development, make sure you are subscribing to my channel and also check out my Facebook page. Alright, it's time to wire everything together and put the system onto the vehicle and give it a try. So here is the conclusion for this DIY blind spot detection system. In most of the cases, it can detect obstacles in the blind spot, 
but it can also be falsely triggered by obstacles other than the vehicle. So if there are multiple sensors on one side, I can improve the system by developing a vehicle recognition function to the code. And also, it will be helpful to read the vehicle speed from the OBT2 sensors so that we can avoid false alarms in parking lots. Alright, that's it for today's video. Hope you find it to be interesting. Like, share, and subscribe. Also, stay tuned for future project videos and videos of explaining the mechanics behind my projects. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.